the 49ers next big move. Do the 49ers have a big move left or have we seen all of the big moves? Um, at this point, I think we've seen the big moves. Like if you start looking at the roster right now, most of the starting spots on paper, when you start drawing it out, look like they're essentially spoken for one move that, you know, it's probably very far fetched, but there's one move that after today, I'm kind of, I've been spending the day thinking about, I don't know if you saw the report that apparently Tennessee approached Kevin Byard about taking a pay cut. He's one of the best safeties in the league. So it's no surprise. He didn't want to take one. Um, financially, he has a massive cap hit this year, and I don't know what the logistics would be, you know, if the 49ers were to pursue a guy like that. But when you start looking at the defense, you know, Deshaun Gibson was great for them last year, but he's also on the other side of 30. Um, how, how much longer are you going to have that security at that position? A guy like Kevin Byard would really put this defense over the top. I already think on paper they're one of, if not the best defenses in the NFL. But if you put a guy like Byard next to Hufanga after the Hall Pro season that he just had, um, you're able to get him and Gibson and Hufanga on the field at the same time. This defense would be incredible. Um, you know, naturally we're going to draw the, con- the connection with Rand Carth in there now. There's at least some familiarity. If it does get to a point where they start fielding offers, there's at least that, you know, um, connection with him in the 49ers. I don't think it's going to happen, but I'm not going to lie there. I've been thinking about that all day. I'm like, man, if there's one piece they could really get to take this defense over the top, I think it's an elite safety. And I think Bayern has been one of the best in the entire NFL. So um, that's one that I'm just kind of, you know, keeping in the back of my mind, kind of, you know, monitoring from a distance and seeing what happens there. But um, I I think other than that, no, I don't think there's like a huge move left to be made. It's just going to be depth signings for the most part. Let's talk about Bayard. He had 69 tackles this year, four interceptions, defended four passes. Um, does Tennessee play a lot of zone or a lot of man? I mean, he he was their free safety opposite of Monty Hooker, uh, who started yeah, he, at strong. He can, he can do everything. Um, he, he, to me, is just – he's one of the just elite players at the position, and it feels like the market for the position is – really weird like I, I i don't know what the details are but it seems like teams are reluctant to play a guy like gardner johnson right now who's a really good safety in his prime we saw harrison smith restructure even though he's a bit older so i don't know if the league is just a little hesitant to you know shell out money for good safeties right now but maybe this is the time to get one and uh you know by, i believe he's 29 going into age 30 um so feasibly there's still a few good years left where he's really playing at a high level he was the first team all pro in 2021 i believe um and i remember very specifically that game the niners played in tennessee on christmas eve in 2021 he was tremendous um he he made it very difficult for the 49ers to get kittle open and uh, just having a guy like that that can erase other teams uh big slots tight ends um is something that i think would really help this 49ers defense out a lot Uh, there's no question and the story coming out of nashville on espn is that they is as you just as you stated they approached byard about taking a pay cut um, <clears throat> he doesn't want to take it and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't believe his play warrants any kind of a decrease in salary. He's probably right. Um, he's been an incredible player. He just signed a five-year extension worth 70.5 million with 31 million guaranteed as recently as 2019. As you, you know, he's a two-time first team all pro. He's got a $19.6 million cap number this year. If the Titans were to release him, They'd save around six million in cap space, but retain thirteen point six million in dead cap space. How does that change if they decide to trade him? He he has been the captain. He, the the players voted him the team captain now four straight years. If they trade him, is that is the cap hit different? Um, I honestly haven't checked, but I can check really quickly. That's something that I honestly probably should have had a better uh, definitive number for before bringing it up, but. Like with stuff like that, the way I always look at it, Larry, it's for the most part, like they can work that stuff out, the financial stuff. Um, and if a team's approaching a guy about a pay cut, usually that means that they feel strongly enough that if they're not willing to take it, they will explore a trade or explore a release. Um, it's saying, let me see, it's trade pre June 1st. Um, it's saying about the same. If they trade him before June 1st, it would be a $13 million dead cap, uh, $5.9 million in cap savings. If they trade him after June 1st, there's only $5 million in dead money and $14 million in cap savings. So I don't know if that's something they could like designate as a post-June 1st, but um, there, there definitely is an avenue for them saving some money if they were to trade him. Very interesting. He was born in Philadelphia. He's 29. 
um, but he went to high school in, in in Atlanta, Georgia, and then went to Middle Tennessee. So he's been in the state of Tennessee really since high school, and he's openly stated that he would love to retire as a Titan and stay as a Titan, but very interesting. Um, what do you think it would take, you know, if you had to guess? Pro- probably, a day, probably a day two pick at this point. I mean, he's still a really good player. It's expensive. But I think at this point, you know, you could get a guy like that for probably the future second or third. And for a player like that, I would I would be at least having the conversations if I'm John Lynch and Adam Peters in that front office, um, because that's one area where um, as great as Hufong has been, he can't play both safety positions. And again, Gibson was fantastic. But how many more years can you count on that given his age um, and the way things are trending? Safety is a position where they don't really have a player right now on the roster that you're looking at where you're like, okay, this is the guy clearly going forward. You know, Taylor Hawkins is a guy maybe they really like that's been on the practice squad. Um, it showed some flashes during the preseason, but I don't think we've seen enough for them to, you know, feel like that's the set in stone safety air apparent. So just given the fact that, you know, it, it could end up being a hole on an otherwise really strong defense in the near future. I think you at least have to explore the potential of making a move for a guy like that. Yeah, I, you know, I don't watch tons of Titan ball, but I was watching Dallas late in the year because I wanted to see because I it really looked like Niners were going to get Dallas in this playoff run, and I just wanted to take a look at the Cowboys, and so I caught them against the Titans late in the year, and yeah, Byard was everywhere. I think he had two picks. He was he was flying around. He was making plays. Um, he's a tremendous football player. That's for sure. We're, it, we're the, the Niners are definitely in that stage right now where they are a Super Bowl contender. They are in their window. If they were going to extend, now would be the opportune time to extend. And that's definitely, you know, if you said where in this football team do they need a difference maker? Um, it's probably in the secondary. I mean, it's a very, very young secondary outside of Tayshawn Gibson. Um, when you look at the players that are there and, you know, what the draft ahead, I think it's very likely that the 49ers are going to have, you know, in their DB room, they're going to have five guys that are like under 24. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a very young room. Absolutely. And I think that, um, you know, th- there's a good balance that you could have of that youth and that athleticism. I thought have, you know, K1 Williams, for example, he was fantastic during his time with the Niners, but as anybody else who plays the sport does, you could see the years kind of catching up and that speed diminishing a bit. And so when you put out a guy like Samuel Womack a little bit, while there is the learning curve and the growth that comes with being a young player, just seeing his long speed and his ability to run in the open field. um, I, I do think there are a lot of benefits to having the young secondary. You just can't have too young of a secondary. And I think finding that balance by bringing in a guy like Byard, who has uh, the pedigree that he has, has the all pro um, accolades to his name would really help round out what could be a really strong group on paper. Um, And, you know, Steve Wilkes has great history with the work that he's done uh, with defensive backs, longtime defensive back coach in the league. So I think that's another area where we'll see kind of an added boost and maybe a little bit of an emphasis with the back end that we haven't seen the last six years or so in San Francisco with uh, Sala and Tobiko as the defensive coordinators. 